So they kind of bring you up to speed on what's been going on. So I, around the 1st of January, uh, sorry, 1st of December, I made a commitment to do something on my airplane project every day, at least a little something, so that I can keep progress and uh, accomplish it sometime in the near future. I got a good start, did about seven, eight days really well. Uh, then I kind of ran into a problem. My problem wasn't enthusiasm or want, it was supplies and parts. Um, I'm not actually started on my airframe. The engineer is still working on the aspects of my airframe, so I'm not, I don't have it ready to go. But I have been working on my engine, as you can see here. Uh, you guys seen some of my other videos about some of the modifications I was making to my Mazda 13B, which I'm going to be putting in my airplane. And um, so I got it all together. Sorry you didn't get a video on that. There was some uh, crazy complications on the day I put it together. I started a video with fighting video problems. Um, I had had a, a work trailer that had been stolen and halfway through getting my motor together the police showed up to tell me they had found my trailer and I had to hurry get things together and move on and I didn't have time to finish the filming. I will tell you there's a bunch of videos on there about putting the engine together. Pretty self-explanatory. I very, very tricky part, a lot more tricky than they made it appear, was the apex seal and spring installation. Um, I did fight that a little bit. I finally got a, a system that worked, which was I put the, the little spring in first, slid the apex seal down so that it had tension on it. Then I put the big spring behind the little spring, flexed the spring and pushed it down in the hole and then pushed it all down in. When I tried to put the big spring in first and the little spring in after, it just kept turning sideways. I had a, a real difficult time with that. I couldn't get it to go in. But anyway, it's moving on. The motor is together. Um, so then my next step was to work on my intake manifold and my exhaust manifold and turbo uh, system. So I designed it out and I started ordering parts and for some reason, I'm not sure the shipping uh, ferry was not on my side and for a month now I've just been waiting for parts and so I haven't been able to do anything. Uh, this flange here was missing, I was missing the turbo without that so I can kind of get it into place. I've kind of just been at a standstill. But yesterday, which was January the 30th, will go down in infamy as the day that all of my parts came at the same time. Let me show you what we got. So I decided to go ahead and order this kit from Hymni Racing. It's basically all of the external components on the engine, uh, all new bolts that are in stainless steel. Uh, so I don't have to use my old crummy gummed up bolts. They're all labeled on each individual area, you know. So for instance, this one right here you'll see is a stainless steel lower intake manifold kit. And there's all the bolts to hook the lower intake manifold on, all brand new in stainless steel. So it was $80, I believe, from Hymni Racing for that entire kit. I already used some of them. You'll notice... I have a front cover kit, and so I got nice new stainless steel bolts on all of my water pump and my front cover, which is nice. So I don't have to have cruddy, gummed up, messed up bolts. They're all new and stainless steel. So I'll start on the intake side. These are the materials that have come in for my intake. I have my four intake tubes, two inch and a half, two one and three quarters that will bring the intake up over the top of the engine. I picked up some aluminum here. You can see I've kind of got a, a plenum design on there which leaves that spot in the middle uh, for the dipstick and the oil fill tube. Then I've got a, you'll see my, this is a pop-off valve. I'm not running a, a traditional wastegate. I'm actually running a manual wastegate. So I will just leave it in the naturally uh, no boost position and then just add boost with a lever next to the throttle as required and then just keep an eye on my manifold pressure. 
But just in case I forgot or did something wrong, I am putting this pop-off valve in the intake side. So uh, it will pop off if the manifold pressure is too high. Then I got this Skunk 2 Pro throttle body in a 70 millimeter, which is about just a hair over two and a half inches, because that's the size I'll be bringing out of the intercooler is two and a half inches. This is the ring that uh, mounts my pop-off valve. This kit right here it eliminates the ejectors on the center iron of my Mazda 13B as I will be putting an injector in each of the intake runners. So I will cap those off. This is the main part here that I waited for that really held me up. I couldn't do anything without. That is my intake manifold plate. Um, needed it to kind of start and design everything. Then I got the coolest part of the whole thing, my turbo. So it's a Garrett GT3682. Uh, you'll notice that the, the exhaust housing is stainless steel. Saves about five pounds off of traditional uh, turbo. I had to make this special in a journal bearing series rather than a ball bearing because from the research and everything I've read um, in an airplane where you're running high RPMs more consistently than in a car, uh, it, the journal bearings are better lasting. The advantage to the ball bearing is it spools up faster, which isn't really an issue to me for the airplane. Um, then here is my exhaust manifold plate, which also came in. And they come, I didn't want them to have one specially made because it costs a lot of money. These come with a two inch diameter, which from talking to even a lot of Mazda automobile experts, they're necking it down to a one and five eighths. Um, so I went ahead and got these reducer cones, I'm going to weld in there, which will bring it down to the actually one and a half is what I'm running. And then I got these steam pipe fittings all in stainless steel, some 45s. And I am getting ready to start mocking up my intake and exhaust manifold. I'm going to start with the intake manifold first um, so that I can get it in place on the engine and make sure that I mount my turbo in a position that is clear and free from that. 